the new adage that we've developed with hemp is waist high by the 4th of July. And there's good news. Under the microscope, the hemp fibers meet all expectations, enough to secure a contract. And you'll find that it's going to be made up of several different cell types that will have right. this rather interesting architecture. An American textile manufacturer who came looking for him will take all the fiber Jeff can produce. It's a big break. But payment comes with delivery, provided the crop comes in as planned. In the meantime, cash flow's a problem. He makes payroll for his 12 employees, hey, there you go. but barely. There you go, Dave. There's a lot more money going out than coming in. That's fuel, propane, and gas. Some bail ties. We've got a hydro bill, which isn't too bad. We, ooh, actually. <laughs> this would be the unpaid pile. This is the unpaid pile. How does he manage it? It can get complicated and get overwhelming, but I generally take the approach of breaking things into smaller tasks and then taking care of each one, and that's maybe a little bit of the engineering background. Outside, it's one of the hottest summers in recent memory. Good hemp weather. Late August. Harvest time. In places, it's 12 feet tall. Hemp doesn't need chemicals. It strangles out weeds and pests, but it needs to be cut now. This machine is another one of Jeff's inventions, an old combine turned into a swather. Jeff custom designed it for cutting hemp, but the machine breaks down. Growing pains is growing pains. Same as inventing anything. Works good on paper until you get the practical use and then... They get it going again, but not for long. Uh, Jeff's more engineer than a farmer, no doubt. It's start, stop, start, stop. On through the afternoon and into the evening. How important is it that this gets cut as soon as possible? Oh, it's very important. I, the fiber quality is affected by the, the time when you harvest it. At twilight, it stops for good. We don't have time to just kind of call it a night on a Friday and, and go home. We've got to keep working, get get the the harvesting system field ready for tomorrow. The repair job goes on most of the night. First light, back on the road. Morning. You guys just don't let up, do you? A last minute adjustment, then cross your fingers. We're back in business. It takes one long week, but the crop comes down. As days grow shorter, the hemp dries in the field. Called redding, it's a natural way of breaking down the fiber. It's then gathered and processed in Jeff's secret machine. The fiber shipped to the States, and by November, the hemp chips are ready for market. Yeah, it'll fit. The Royal Winter Fair, Toronto, just last week. All right, just what you guys love to see, eh? After five years of dreaming, Hempline has a product. Ta-da! Lori's found a distributor. After 60 years, Canadian-grown hemp is back on the market. Lots of the product. Let's show it off. The job now, sell. Jeff, the researcher, farmer, engineer... Okay, well... ...is finally an entrepreneur. Let's just bring on the people. <laughs> For Venture, I'm David Gray. There are now 30 farmers growing hemp for Jeff Keim. Demand is so strong, he's trying to raise money again to expand his processing facilities. Hemp chip sales are steady, and even though the textile industry has mostly moved offshore, it turns out there are many other markets for hemp fiber, containers, suitcases, and construction materials. But the biggest market for Keim's hemp is in the automotive industry. It's used as a reinforcing material in molded plastic car interiors. A view of sport.